Okay, let's start with a basic introduction to chess to make it easier for you to understand the rest or to simply refresh your memory. A chessboard consists of 64 square spaces. There are files, which are the columns going up and down, pointing at you and your opponent, and marked from A to H. And then there are ranks, the horizontal rows from 1 to 8. Each of the 64 spaces is identified by the combination of a letter of the file and a number of the rank. The player with the white pieces goes first. Each chess piece has a name and specific move capabilities. Don't forget to position the board correctly before playing. Each player should have a dark square in their lower left corner. Now, the first piece we're going to discuss is the rook. It's placed at the corners of the board, which are a1 and h1 for one player, and a8 and h8 for the other. The best thing about rooks is that they can move any number of vacant squares both vertically and horizontally. If your opponent's piece blocks either of your paths, move the rook to the occupied square, and there you go! Another player's piece will be long gone. But remember one important thing. Rooks can't jump over pieces. <laughs> That's checkers. If one of your pieces is between your rook and your opponent's piece, this move is not going to work. Next, we'll take a closer look at the horse, or knight. Knights are placed on squares b1 and g1 for one player, and b8 and g8 for the other. Unlike rooks, knights can jump over other pieces, and they're actually the only piece that can do that. They move in an L-shaped pattern, two squares horizontally and one vertically, or one horizontally and two vertically. Keep in mind that knights can capture a piece only when they land on that piece's square. Next up, we have the bishops in square C1 and F1, or C8 and F8. Bishops can move over any number of free squares in a diagonal direction. Just like rooks, they can capture an opponent's piece standing in their way by stopping on that piece's square. But step aside, everyone! It's time for the king and queen to enter the game. Welcome, your royal highnesses! You only get one queen, d1 for a white queen, or d8 for a black queen, and she's the most important piece on the board, basically the rook and bishop combined. She can literally do whatever she wants, moving any number of vacant squares horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. She captures pieces on her way by moving to their squares. The king's place is one of the two last empty squares, e1 and e8. The king isn't as powerful as the queen and can only move one square at a time horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. He can attack any piece except for the other king and queen, and that's because he can't move close enough to initiate a capture. But don't underestimate him. The king is unbelievably valuable. If you lose him, you lose the game. So try to protect him at all costs. Finally, we have a whole row of pawns to shield your other pieces. They take the rows from A1 to H1 for one player, and from A7 to H7 for the other. Pawns move one square forward with one exception. The first time they move, Pawns can go forward either one or two squares, but no more of that after the first move. Only one square at a time for the rest of the game. Now, there's one downside to pawns. If your opponent's piece is directly in front of your pawn, you can't move it forward or capture the piece. Huh. Talk about inconvenience, right? The only way for the pawn to capture the piece is when that piece is placed one square forward and another one to the left or right of the pawn itself. And there we have all the chess pieces. Okay, so to win and become a true chess champion, your task is to checkmate your opponent's king. It may sound like a piece of cake, but it's way more complicated than you might think. Checkmate basically means putting the king in a position where he'll be captured because he can't move or be protected by any other piece. 
the more of your opponent's pieces you capture, the easier it'll be to checkmate. Just don't focus all your energy on this. Your own king should be properly protected at all times, so that your opponent can't get to him. Before you checkmate your opponent, you can just check them. This means that you should have one of your pieces within capturing range of your rival's king. In this situation, you must say check out loud to let your opponent avoid checkmate by moving their king to any free square, blocking the check by placing one of their pieces in front of the king to protect him, or capturing your piece that has placed their king in check. The same applies to you as well. If you're in danger of a check, you have the same three options to escape it. To avoid a check yourself, think carefully before making any move that might expose your king to capture. Only one rule applies here. Do not move your king onto a square that your opponent's piece might move to on their next move. But enough with all the theory. Let's talk strategies. Even though the game ends with checkmate, each of the pieces has its own relative offensive strength value. For pawns, it's 1 point. A knight's value is 3 points, 3.5 three points for a bishop, 5 points for a rook, and 9 points for a queen. This is really helpful when comparing the total points value of each player to see who has the current advantage. The most important thing to know is the strong points of any piece. Pawns, for example, are stronger when they're together in chains to protect one another. Try to keep them that way unless you see an amazing opportunity to break the chain and make a great strategic move. Knights are weak and useless if you keep them near the edge of the board. Knights can control up to 8 squares, but when you put them near the edge, this number gets cut in half. Use their abilities to your advantage instead of limiting them. Bishops are at their strongest when they're on or near long diagonals. They can control more squares. Rooks have the most power in open files. Try to position your rooks on files that don't contain any of your pawns. Rooks can also be quite helpful on the 7th rank for white and the 2nd rank for black, but only if your opponent's king is on the starting rank. But what about the queens? They are dripping with power on any square, right? Well, the center of the board is actually the best place for them strategically, but the worst in terms of all the danger they're exposed to. Successful chess players suggest keeping the queen one move away from the center and trying not to block her movement with any of your own pieces. For the kings, there's only one strict rule. Do anything you can to make sure that your opponent doesn't get to him. If you want to make your own rules on the chessboard and be the main force of the game, try to control the center of the board. Your opening can help you do that. A D or E pawn is a great way to start and open the center of the board. The best follow-ups after a couple of pawn moves are knights and bishops. To claim the center, use your pawns while attacking your opponent with all the other pieces. Your opponent will then have to stay on the side with the limited options to choose from. Change things up and use all of your pieces, except for the king, of course. If you leave something out, you waste that piece's potential and abilities. But don't just do something on the spur of the moment. Chess is a very strategic game, and you have to think several moves ahead and not just move pieces cluelessly. At the same time, you have to watch your opponent closely and try to foresee their strategy and plan. Way too many things to do at once, but you'll definitely love it. In addition, don't give up your pieces without a fight. Take your time and scan the board carefully to see all your options and possible moves. Don't rush, take it slow, and make sure you don't miss anything. Let's open this part with a pawn's en passant move. As you might have already guessed, it's French and stands for in passing. En passant is a special capture move that a pawn can make. If you're playing with white, your pawn must be on the fifth rank for it, and it's the fourth rank for black. For you to capture en passant, 
your opponent's pawn must move two squares forward and land next to your pawn. This is the beginning of the game move, as this has to be a pawn that hasn't moved before, as pawns can only move two squares on their first move. So if that happens, you can move your pawn forward diagonally to the side where your opponent's pawn is and make the capture as you pass. But it has to be done immediately, or you lose your chance. There's one more pawn move called Pawn Promotion. No, <laughs> he doesn't get a raise. If a pawn reaches the far side of the board, which is the 8th rank for white and the 1st rank for black, it must immediately be promoted to any other piece, except for the king. The best way to go is to promote your pawn to the queen, but one more rook, bishop, or knight won't hurt either. Finally, there's a very useful castling move to protect the king. It's used to get the king out of the middle of its rank where he's exposed to the most danger. To make the castling move, move your king two squares toward any rook, and then hop that rook over the king so it lands on the square next to the king. Remember that there can't be any pieces between the rook and the king. Also, the king shouldn't be in check, and both the king and rook have to be pieces that haven't made a single move in the game yet. If all these rules apply, you can confidently go for the castling move.